We'll begin with the most basic endgame there is, king and pawn versus king. Now obviously the fight in this type of position is over the queening of the pawn. Here, the white king wants to escort its pawn off the board, and the black king wants to prevent it. The critical themes to understand in king and pawn endgames are opposition and critical squares. In this position, if the white king can occupy f4, e4, or d4, he's winning. These are the critical squares. If black can prevent it, then the game is drawn. In this position, if black is to move, white is winning. But if white is to move, then it's a draw. Why? Well, the pawn is on e2, and the critical squares for the white king to reach are f4, e4, and d4. If it's black's move, the king has to leave the defense of one of those squares. If he plays king d5, white plays king f4. If he plays king f5, white plays king d4. Now, many chess players believe that in all positions, it's to their advantage to have the move. This is an example, and that is not the case. Let's say white were to move, and he plays king f3. What's black's correct move? King f5. Maintain the opposition. The kings are lined up with one rank in between, whose ever move it is has a disadvantage. Let's try to win with white. If we play e3, black will play king e5. Now the critical squares are the f5, e5, and d5 squares for the white king to reach. It seems very hard. In fact, white can't possibly reach that with correct defense. Let's try. King e2, black simply defends. King e4, king d2, king e5, king d3, king d5. Black doesn't allow the white king near. Let's return to the original position now. We'll see this one out to the end. If it's black's move, he has to play king either f5 or d5, or backwards. Let's say he plays king f5. White plays king d4. This position is objectively winning, because white occupies one of the critical squares. If black plays king f4, then white can immediately start pushing the pawn off the board, e4, followed by king d5 and e5. There's no way to stop it. So black would go back, king e6. Now, what do you play? It would be a critical mistake for white to push his pawn, because if he plays, say, e3, then suddenly the position is drawn again. Black plays king d6, and black has the opposition. The kings are lined up, one square in between. White can't occupy the new critical squares, which are f5, e5, or d5. The correct move would be to play king e4. Black plays king d6, white plays king f5. Now white occupies the next line of critical squares. If the white pawn is on e3, then these are the critical squares. Black then goes king e7. Then white can play king e5. Black plays king d7. White pushes the king further back, king f6. Now let's say black storms the pawn, king d6. Now white can start pushing, e4. White occupies the critical square for the pawn to be on e4, and he's winning. Black plays king d7. And now we reach the new level, e5. The rule of the critical squares when the pawn reaches the fifth rank is that the king only has to occupy one of the squares one rank in front, and not two. So after white plays e5, no matter whose move it is, if white occupies either d6, e6, or f6, the position is winning. So if black were to play now king d8 to try to get a diagonal opposition, then white could simply play king f7, followed by escorting the pawn up the board e6, e7, e8, queen. If instead black were to play king e8, how do you win? Here, white takes the opposition again, king e6. If black plays king f8, king d7, followed by the pawn coming up the board. If king d8, then king f7, wins. The key point is that if white were to have played e6 instead, the game would be a draw. Black plays king f8, and when white pushes the pawn e7, king e8, the only legal move white can play to maintain defense of the white pawn is king e6, stalemate, it's a draw. This is the basic theory of king and pawn in games. So if we return to virtually any position, let's put a pawn on c4, a black king on c7, and a white king on d4. White to move. What is the evaluation and what is the best move? White plays king c5 with the opposition, and white is winning. After king d7, king b6, we have the critical squares and we win. Now these rules that I've shown you are true about the pawn on any file, b through g. A and H files, the rook files, are very different. If a pawn is on A4, or anywhere on the A file, 
All the king needs to do is occupy the corner, and it's a draw. Why? You can put the white king on b6, for example. All the king has to do is move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. When the white pawn comes up the board, when he finally moves to a7, it's stalemate. So if the black king were to be on b8 after a7, king a8, king a6, stalemate. And if the black king were already to be on a8 after a7, stalemate. In truth, it goes even further than that. If the white pawn isn't advanced too far, then c7 is all that the black king needs to occupy. Because if black occupies the c7 square, he's either going to immediately get to b7 and a8, or if white can stop that by having a king on a7, there's no way for white to maintain the black king's distance from the corner and get out of the way of his pawn. So white pushes the pawn to a5 to a6. Meanwhile, black just moves back and forth, king c8, king c7. And after finally king b6, then black plays king b8 and enters the corner. If white moves his own king to a8, then black can stalemate white, which you wouldn't think possible when down material. King c7, a7, king c8, white has no legal moves, and the game is a draw. This is the basic theory of king and pawn in games.